Hello again, and welcome to another HVAC how-to video. I'm Eric Scheidel, the HVAC Service Mentor, and today we're going to talk all about how to test motor run capacitors. Now in this video, I'm not going to go into great detail about exactly how a run capacitor works or exactly what it does in the motor circuit. For those details, see the series all about capacitors. For now, the secret in testing a capacitor in the field lies in the understanding of the basic function of a capacitor, which is a capacitor will store and suddenly release an electric charge. And there are three tests that you can do in the field to determine whether a capacitor is good or whether it's bad. These are the three items that you need to measure and test a capacitor in the field. Of course, you need your capacitor first. And to properly test a capacitor, it needs to be disconnected from the system, just like this one is. You need a multimeter that can measure capacitance and a screwdriver that has a metal blade and a plastic handle. Now, when you're measuring a capacitor, remember the capacitor's job is to store and release a charge. And there may be a charge contained inside the capacitor, so we need to dissipate that or discharge the capacitor. That's what the screwdriver is for. We're just going to bridge the two terminals together, and that is going to equalize the charge between the two terminals, and it'll be now safe to handle. Otherwise, it could discharge into you and wake you up. The next step is to adjust the multimeter to measure capacitance. And this meter, the capacitor symbol is right here. Your meter may say MFD, or it may say CAP, or it may have the capacitor symbol like this one does. So I'm going to adjust the meter to measure capacitance, turn the selector dial to the correct location, hit the function key, and now we are in microfarads mode. Now it's just a simple matter of attaching the leads to the terminals of the capacitor and reading the display. And you can see this one is measuring 4.89 microfarads and it is a 5 microfarad capacitor. That's pretty good. Okay, so most of the time a measurement of microfarads is enough to condemn a capacitor. If the measurement is out of spec, the capacitor is bad and it needs to be replaced. But there are times when a capacitor can measure normal microfarads and still be bad. Remember, the true job of a capacitor is to store and suddenly release an electric charge. So let's go back to the bench and see if the capacitor can do that. Okay, so in order to see if our capacitor is going to accept a charge and release a charge, first thing we have to do is charge it up. Our, initially, we had discharged the capacitor with the screwdriver, so it should be completely discharged. We want to see if it'll take a charge, and we can do that with a multimeter. Any multimeter will, will do this. It doesn't have to be a fancy or expensive one. That's not important. The first thing we're going to do is adjust the meter to measure for ohms and keep it in the ohm scale. And we are going to apply the test leads as if we're measuring for resistance. And what we're looking for on the display is for the meter to begin at a lower value and move to a higher value. It's not important what the value is as long as it begins at a lower value and moves to a higher value. So when I do this, you're going to see the meter start in the kiloohm scale and then quickly start to increase and move into the megaohm scale and move up from there. So here we go. Kiloohms, megaohms, and rising to three, four meg ohms, five meg ohms. It's approaching the top of the scale, six meg ohms, up to 35 meg ohms, 40 meg ohms, 50 meg ohms and off the scale. Because of the way the meter 
measures resistance. It sends out voltage on one probe and looks to see how much it get back, gets back on the other probe. And because the charge is being accumulated inside the capacitor, the meter is seeing less and less and less returning back on the second probe. So it interprets that as an increasing level of resistance. So what we've really done is installed a charge into this capacitor. And now we can measure that charge and dissipate it by checking for DC volts. So the third and final test we'll do is to move the meter to measure DC volts and simply apply the probes again. What we're looking for here is for the meter display to move from a higher value to a lower value. And once again, it doesn't matter what the value is, as long as it starts high and begins to go lower. So here we go. Starting at 4.6 volts DC and falling. 4.0. 3.5, and so on. So this capacitor has passed all three tests. It measured the proper microfarads, it uh, accepted a charge, and it dissipated a charge. Good capacitor. Now one final note I want to show you about discharging the capacitor. We know we've installed a, a charge in the capacitor. We've partially discharged it with the screwdriver. We're going to very quickly discharge it. There it is. And if we measure the charge on the capacitor, we've got zero. So those are the three crucial capacitor field tests. Measuring capacitance in microfarads, the rising ohms test, and the falling DC volts test. I encourage you to practice all three of these in the field on every capacitor that you find, as well as brand new capacitors that you know are good. If a capacitor so much as looks at you funny, under any one of these three tests, it is bad and it needs to be replaced. So thanks for watching. I'm Eric Scheidel, the HVAC Service Mentor. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel for the very best HVAC tech tips you can use in the field. And don't forget, go to www.hvacservicementor.com and check out the more in-depth courses that can help you become a top-level service technician. Thank <music> you.